Welcome to Exploring London, the little known series where we explore London. And today, for the first time, I've come to the southwest of the city. I've come to the suburb of Clapham, home to irritating millennials for two centuries. Now, I know what you're thinking. Andrew, Clapham is just home to bars, grass, and the busiest railway station in the country. But you would be wrong, my friends, because Clapham Junction isn't in Clapham. It's in Battersea. So I've been told I'm not allowed to cover it. Anyone that's ever been on a long car journey with me will know that I have an intense obsession with whether we're driving on a Roman road or not. Look, I know we're gonna be late now, but just imagine one day, thousands of years ago, Roman soldiers thundered towards Caledonia. And Clapham High Street is, of course, not a Roman road. It's a sort of parallel offshoot of one, though, that was called Stain Street. It used to run from London Bridge all the way down to Chichester back in the days of Centurions. This bit that we're on is called sometimes the Clapham Deviation, which coincidentally is what I call my friend Mark. So bizarrely, this quiet suburban paradise around the corner is the remains of the ancient thoroughfare. Not that any of the residents probably know that. Idiots. A big chunk of one part of the London Underground follows the route of Stain Street, giving rise to the indisputable fact that the original designer of the route of the Northern Line was a Roman engineer back in AD 40. There's a few clues hanging around as to the Roman heritage, including this ancient marking stone, helpfully completely obscured by shrubbery, that lies outside the omnibus theatre. I'm in the old town now, which was the bit of Clapham where, in the 1700s, the well-to-do of society started building their magnificent grand houses far away from the muck and grime of the city. The joke was on them, though. In the 1800s, the railways built out here and brought the muck and grime right back to their snobbish faces. It's quite interesting. If you look at old maps of Clapham High Street in the 1850s, there's these lavish front gardens everywhere. They're all kind of village mansions. 60 years later, though, the front gardens have all gone. It's part of smelly London now. Clapham's one of those places that tour guides can list off names of people you've vaguely heard of that used to live here. Charles Barry, Samuel Beeps, Edvard Green. But I can't be bothered with that, so I'm going to tell you the story of one of them. Behind me is the Holy Trinity Church, which Clapham residents built on the common in the 1800s. A man called William Wilberforce, whose name sounds a bit like a Thomas the Tank Engine character, had recently had an eat, pray, love moment, searching for himself whilst travelling Europe with his mum. He had converted to evangelical Christianity and so moved to Clapham where like-minded individuals who'd go on to be known as the Clapham sect were campaigning to abolish slavery. And they did it. He did it. He was a driving force behind the abolition of slavery. And then he died three days after the news came through that it would go through Parliament, which I guess kind of makes it his life's work. Of the railways that were built out to Clapham, the one with the biggest impact, of course, was London Underground. And Clapham has three stations. Clapham North, Clapham Common Station. Clapham South. If you haven't seen my London Bridge video, a truly unmissable experience. You'll have missed me talking about the city and South London Railway of which this was a part of, the first tube railway anywhere in the world. This island platform design was a feature of a lot of the original stations, built in a time when you didn't have to squeeze up against a sweaty 50 year old man in order to get to work in the morning, and people falling onto the tracks due to overcrowding was therefore not a concern. One place this was corrected is up the line at Angel, where they filled in one track, dug a new tunnel and left this disconcertingly wide platform behind. Just a few yards away from Clapham South Underground Station is this slightly odd round thing. If you spent enough time in London you'll have seen a few of them around, like a Good Street or Belsize Park. They're the entrances to deep level underground bomb shelters constructed during the Second World War. <gasps> Intriguing. Tell me more. They were built as long tubular underground shelters to protect people from, well, you know, 
bombs. But their locations, shape and size were all determined so that they could be converted at a later stage into express underground railway lines, running parallel to the existing routes of the northern and central lines, but skipping several less important stops, which, I'm sorry Clappamites, included you. I've drawn this professional level diagram here just to give you an idea of what it would look like. You have the two northern line running tunnels in the middle. In fact, there's a northern line train going through right now. And then either side of it, the bigger express tunnels, which would eventually would have had the big express trains, but at this point were just being used as bomb shelters. But after the war was done, there was no money to build these big express lines. And with the changing economy and the, uh, the rise of the car, uh, there just wasn't the popularity left in underground railways to justify the huge expense of constructing big new lines. And Clapham is filled with more of these bomb shelters than anywhere else in London, which, if you think about it, is actually quite suspicious. I mean, who are they protecting? Maybe it's the lizard people. Maybe Clapham's run by the lizard people. Maybe the lizard people are watching this right now. I hope they subscribe. Anyway, this is the one at Clapham North. There's two near Clapham Common Station. But this Clapham South shelter is probably the most famous one. See, after the war, Britain needed immigrants to help rebuild the country. So the Queen picked up the phone and called Jamaica and asked for some immigrants to be sent over post haste. With the promise of new lives, apparently some of them agreed and the Empire Windrush was the ship that brought them over. Fun fact, the Empire of Windrush isn't actually a British ship. It was originally German, so it was used during the Second World War as a Nazi trip ship. But what's probably even hey, more fascinating hey, than hey, that is... Hey, hey, there's still a lot to get through, so let's focus. The West Indian immigrants, when they arrived, needed a place to stay. And this bit sounds like, but it really isn't a joke. Most of them were put up here at the now disused bomb shelter at Clapham South. This is where the Windrush generation that the government now hates started in Britain. <laughs> that's quite that's quite bungy dialogue now isn't it um am i am i allowed to say that you're damn right i am vice magazine once called clapham the worst part of london which is actually pretty rich coming from vice but it was one of the first parts of the city that got completely whitewashed sorry gentrified gentrified uh, and i think we're so far out the other side of that gentrification process that clapham just isn't cool anymore however all the people that i know that live here are completely obsessed with it they think it's got all the things that young millennials with paychecks could ever want by my count there's eighty-seven thousand different bars and restaurants in clapham and i checked all of them serve avocado very little digging is required to see what used to be here the Sainsbury's is too expansive to have not been something else before. And sure enough, not so very long ago, there it is as a tram depot. Across the street, the renowned nightclub Inferno's has an inconsistently fancy upper facade. And guess what? It was built in 1914 as the Majestic Cinema. And in one incarnation was a recording studio used by the Sex Pistols, who were apparently a band. This place next to Clapham Common wouldn't let me film inside, unfortunately, but it used to be a public toilet. Yeah, avocados. And then there's the Common. Now, would you like a few facts about that? Oh, not really, to be honest. Well, it was first recorded as existing one millennium ago in that old page turner, the Doomsday Book, as part of the Manor of Clapham. Clapham, by the way, comes from the Old English clop meaning homestead, and ham, meaning hillock. So literally, the homestead on a hillock. So endlessly English. The common was not the pram-pushing paradise as it is today. It was marshy, wild, with those aforementioned hillocks and ditches all over the place. Eventually, the upper-class twits living around the common started to beautify it, and they built this bandstand in the 1800s, which I'm told is both the largest in London and possibly the largest 19th century bandstand anywhere in the world. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I just don't have the energy to fact check that. We're just going to have to believe. Finally, during the Second World War, the need to grow food coupled with the use of the common for anti-aircraft weaponry and barrage balloons turned it into the flat, slightly featureless park we have today. And I bet you didn't think we could say this much about this little pocket of London. But anyway, that's me tucking out again for the next few months. Uh, like, subscribe, and if you really enjoyed it, maybe share the video with your friends. It really is very cold out here.